Yo, 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 what's going on? What's going on? As y'all see, I got my little buddy in the back moving around. But it's Terrell, Hall of Fame, D-Line, TBKC, and all that sweet, beautiful, wonderful shh. And no, I'm not crying. I just put in my eye drops. <laughs> but anyway, um, I've been getting all kind of questions. Uh, as y'all know, I've been running like crazy, so you'll get this flood of videos. And we'll get back on live here very, 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 very soon. I'm uh, trying to clear up some things with the website. Some of y'all might have seen that the coming soon page jumped up there. A little progress. We're getting some things done. Um, but I'll have some answers for y'all as far as paperwork goes and shows goes and all that stuff all this week. Uh, anyway, I tell you what. Uh, <clears throat> we take on the questions. We take on the questions. And uh, somebody asked me why, you know, what would be the big deal? And uh, as many of y'all have seen this about Tommy, why would I, why would they want to breed the Tommy and all that stuff? And I think it's with, you know, we could do a, a Tommy promo, but I think it's with every stud. You just have to ask what they bring. So if I was doing at this point in time an evaluation on Tommy, uh, my evaluation would be sort of off the charts for uh, a couple of reasons. Structurally, it's not really much wrong with him at all. Like he moves well in the rear. He's got a good setup in the rear. He's got nice paws. Wide tra chest, his proportions are very, very good. Beautiful top line, thick neck. You know, we go on and on and on. At this point, you know, he's got what I was, <clears throat> excuse me, what I would say is the more adolescent head for what I think it'll be. Uh, his head is probably in the range of more sorts towards like 22 to 23 inches you know and then he's just hitting a year so uh if that's any like indication based off of the other dogs you know uh mandela and the other ones mandela was in that similar range right around uh right around the same age so i expect him to keep on growing keep on popping recently he's already spread out he's actually wider than odell is now so you know the look and everything like that that's the easy part I think the craziest part is when people are doing the breeding is that when you look at a dog like Tommy, and I'm not just saying just Tommy, but any of these dogs, your pedigree says Mandela, which in my opinion and some other opinions, Mandela's one of the better dogs, you know, in breed history. He's not a show dog, but as an example, bulliness, pedigree, all that, he's on point. So you get Mandela as the dad, and then you turn around and you get a Mufasa, one of the, you know, the greatest grand champion of all time and coming from the legendary blood that he comes from with Blue Pride. Then you take, you know, the mother side of that and she's double lock and load, who's also Bistro's uh, father, grand champion lock and load, who's also happened to be, uh, Bistro happened to be Mandela's father by way, you know, of breeding to a Denzel daughter who happens to be a litter mates from the legendary producers that also, uh, you know, dropped Magoo and Masterpiece. Those sisters were just breeders. So the pedigree is so locked in that even if I didn't have a chance to actually look at the dog, I would gamble and, and, and breed to those type of pedigrees. You have, like, it's so stacked. It's no room, really. Uh, and, of course, nothing is perfect, but... It's no room for failure. This is the way I like to breed. This is why Tommy is going to become a huge part of what I'm doing. This is another reason why uh, a dog like Chubb will become a huge part of what we're doing. Because he brings in, like on that same side, Chubb brings in the legendary Armani. If y'all look up uh, Razor's Edge Armani, it's just, the pedigree is ridiculous. Because it goes back so far. So it goes back to the original stuff. But he's also you know, heavily line bred blue line, which Eddie is another legendary breeder with great blood across the board. So you're combining great bloods and then the dog is turning out to look pretty good. So that helps. This is the way I choose my studs. I don't like to say, oh, this certain dog is hot. Oh, he looks like phenotype doesn't mean a lot to me because I've seen horrible pedigrees produce uh, very good looking phenotypes, but it doesn't hold over. You know what I mean? You need a combination of both. And uh, genotype to me has always been a little more important than phenotype because the genotype is is how it's built. You know what I'm saying? The phenotype can oftentimes, like I say, present a good idea, but it can also be fictional and you can have those anomalies. So, you know, I mean, it's, um, 
you know, I use my dogs as an example. Like I have a big, um, what is that? Camelot blood meal, uh, Creed that I'm going to be using some. And uh, Creed, you know what I mean, is very, very sizable. His dad was gigantic. And uh, he brings the old uh, Camelot blood to the to the scene, and I know what to do with that. So that's more of genealogy again. That you know, uh, but that's a two-step process in my program because what I will be doing is breeding him to a couple females to make females that are pretty much like half edge uh, blood, half uh, Camelot blood. Then I'll run that to my stuff, and giving you know, giving the puppies in the long run a quarter percent of that Camelot blood to expand, to give it a little more attitude, to give it a little more size and bone, but still keeping the look of the edge blood, but. This is the way I do my uh, my breedings. Everything starts with uh, with pedigree, with genealogy, and then we sort of focus on the looks. So no matter what stud you're picking, the best thing that you can do is genes. Because you remember that the genes are locking in pretty much, you know, the, for, uh, the, 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 uh, the blueprint of what you're putting down, you know. Don't get fooled by people who say, oh, look at my dog, look at my dog. But then you look at the pedigree and it's something that sort of leaves you a little bit to be desired about. Because when, when you do that, that's really what you're putting into your dogs. You might have a dog or two that you don't like in the pedigree and that's fine if it's five, six, seven generations back, you know, it's barely there. But you want to like the stuff that you're seeing and you want to be able to trust the phenotype and the genotype of, of, of when you're picking your studs. If you're just picking off a of hype and picking off of what you see up front, a lot of times you're gonna be greatly disappointed. But um, like I told y'all, man, that's why, I, that's why I'm very, very high on Tommy. Not only that, but his development gives me the idea that he's probably gonna end up being the best put together dog that I've ever produced. And that includes Castro. He, right now, his confirmation level is at Castro's level, but his bulliness level is going to be at the very least above Denzel's, maybe not uh, Mandela, but he has a shot to get into that range because he's very, very thick, big, big back. It's there, you know, so uh, we'll see how he develops. But um, if, I, if I was predicting Tommy, and thanks for the question, Michelle, um, I would be predicting that he's probably going to be the best overall dog. We we don't know about producer, but as far as looks and the, the total package, he'll be the best overall dog that we produce so far. Until next time, y'all, much love. Peace.